me and Puff had already done the Boys in the Hood deal. Right. It, it was like, it was a lot of things that happened during the deal that kind of like made me feel different. Like meaning right. like I'm going to Magic City right. and Puff is calling my phone to sign the deal for Boys in the Hood. Uh. But I'm telling him I'm going to Magic City. Right. And he's calling my phone back to back and he like go to Kinko's and sign the contract and send it back like with the fax machine. By the way, kids, Kinko's <laughs> right. the place you used to go to my to get copies right, right. and Xeroxes right. and shit. So, For those who don't own Xerox, that's how you copy some right, shit. Right, okay, right. continue. So, right. so, so now I'm like, yo, I ain't going to Kinko's. I'm getting, you know, so I, you know, I just had a chip on my shoulder mm. and, and it was when Jay was like, yo, man, like, you know, he sat me and puffed down and we just, you know, talk. You know, so I got a chance to really know because I didn't really, I knew him, but I knew him through like me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I only saw him in club settings. So I was like, I'm a street guy. You know, you're going to respect me. That was my whole MO with any rapper or any yeah, entertainer because right. it was just like, I'm risking my life out here. Y'all ain't going through this shit. So anyway, right. Puff um, and Jay sit there and I go, look, man, I want to do the Puff deal, but I'm only going to do one album. I gave Puff a number. And he was cool with that. You know what I'm saying? And, and me and Puff been cool ever since. Like, that's my bro. Like, we chop it up about business, spirituality, whatever. But he was like, all right, cool. And now I got Puff and Jay in the same room, and they agreeing to let me do this Boys in the Hood album. Only one album. Right. Push Thug Motivation back, which is highly anticipated for a month. Which so is your first album my first on Def Jam. Right, Thug okay. Motivation 101. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm coming off a Trap or Die, and I'm using them boys as another... Marketing oh, piece, that, that you know what I'm saying. I'm saying. Oh, that <laughs> so now I got genius. two deals, and I'm I'm building this momentum. That that was my mindset. That was genius. So right. That was genius. And, and, and with the guys, you know, and no disrespect to them, I just think I was a little more seasoned when it came from business mm -hmm. because I came out of the streets and I was mm -hmm. used to dealing with real. When you say the guys, you talk about the other people from Boys in the Hood. Boys in the yeah, Hood. Yeah. So they didn't understand, you know, what I was doing mm -hmm. because I'm thinking business. I mean, I get the records, and I also knew that them boys was a hit. Was you ever looked at as like like you like going for the selfish move or I th like I think that yeah. if I'm honest and they probably tell you this thing, I think it's been some situations where I kind of tried to put them on the game right but they probably looked at me like I was separating the group and you really wasn't the official rapper at that time right. either I was the street right. guy who just had one good verse right. on the whole project. And hey, by the way, I, like Easy and I was on a tour with yeah, like, like Easy like, 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 and I was on tour with Jody Breeze like Jody Breeze was the guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all the girls love Jody. Like we mm -hmm. on the bus, like damn, like fuck, I got on a hundred thousand dollar Rolex. You don't see this? Shit? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but, hey, um, but but before you continue, because I also worked the Bad Boy Records, right? Mm -hmm. And and he he was on where did the uh, boards go? Oh, boards on boards a part of the street team too. And we you know, they was pushing. We was the Miami street team. I was running it down here, and they they were like, okay, this is a South record. Y'all got to push this. But there seemed to be some confusion when that record came. Because it, it was like, you're on, you're in the group, you're not in the group. Yeah, right. the record. What, what, what the thing was that, rightfully so, I'm my own boss because I'm uh, pressing on my own CDs. Uh, I'm paying for my own stuff. I'm signed to Def Jam. Um, uh, I, I got a publishing situation. You ask Big John, he'll tell you. Right. I, Big John, that's I, that I money, man. I didn't even cash my Def Jam in my publishing check. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I just had these checks in my house. Well, with well, the publishing check, I lost in a pair of jeans, which was crazy because I had to figure that out because <laughs> I, I didn't know. And then I had, um, you know, my Def Jam check that I didn't even cash because I had bread. And I remember Jay called me one day. He's like, "Yo, what, what are you doing?" I hope they reissue okay. the check. For you. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know Wait, did you lose the publishing check? You, you don't even remember? No, I lost it. And then I called Big John. Well, shout out to Big John. He's, and he's he had to give you that check again. He had to refund the check. It, yeah. Yeah, he, he didn't understand what the hell was Because nobody on. can't take that check and cash it. But I'm going to be honest. You know, I'm a street guy. I had my money you in the time bags. I thought when he gave me the check that it was already somewhere I needed to go pick it up. I didn't know about <laughs> bank accounts. Like it was a cashier <laughs> check. Right. 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 I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So, <sighs> and it was a huge check. Right. Mm -hmm. no, a huge check. Mm -hmm. And me and John laugh about that uh, alone. You know, just anyway. But the reality of it is... I didn't discuss with the guys what I was doing on the business side, so they probably felt like right. that I was, was being selfish, mm -hmm. but I had a plan, right. you feel me? And that was my plan. Because y'all was never really a officially a group. Y'all right. was kind because of I had put together. I was, I was getting a label deal with Def Jam, which was CTE. Right. Then, From the shout out to the new deal, Corporate Thugs Entertainment. Uh -huh. the new deal. <laughs> but, but, but I had a plan, mm -hmm. and I wasn't 
trying to just be in a group. You, you see right. what I'm saying? Because I wanted to break my own artists and do my own thing. So, again, communication. Right. I didn't talk to them and say, hey, look, this is what I'm trying to do. I was more so like, I'm going to do this. You know, y'all got to figure this shit out. That's so real. That's, you know, probably why, you know, it kind of went a little left. And to make it more awkward, I was working Death Jam as well. <laughs> so oh, then yeah. we worked his records. Which was the hardest decision in my life. Right. I said, I'm going to walk alone. And that's what you talk about, right. you saw. Right, yep. And ever since then, it's just like, it's me. Right. Of course, I got people around me that I love. Right. And then they're, they're, you know, my staff and right. people that work with me and the people right. that I employ because right. we had the same vision. Right. But right. as far as just keeping people around a safe face, right. I can't do that anymore. Right. Because that brings too much bad energy. And it's just like, I don't need bad energy with what I'm trying to do with my life. It's just like, you don't want that. Right. And I feel G Herbo because he's a kid from Chicago. Yeah. It's going through some real things. You can tell that he's beyond a star. Yeah. So and he's he, only like if, 23 or 24, right. something like so that. So if he holds he's on 34, to that. 34. Like, right. Because <laughs> you, 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 you get, right. his knowledge right. is just crazy. Right. And when I started being around people that, you know, that really wanted to see me win or connect me with people that I really couldn't get in the room with, that's when I started to see, like, oh, there are people out there in the world. They're good people. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're good people. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be nowhere in the situation where I'm in. Right. Yeah, I got to sleep with two Glocks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because right. the homies downstairs, I don't know if one of them might, you know what I mean, feel a way about this or that. And I and I love my I love my, my homeboys, but it's just like, we didn't have the same vision. Mm. We didn't want to be the same place. Mm-hmm. My palate is different. Yeah. I like, you, you start know, like sushi. Sushi. Yeah. And sushi like, and, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, you spit some cigars. Like, you know caviar. Right, yeah, okay. You know? yeah, so yeah, I'm like, there with you. Right. I'm there with you. Okay. <laughs> so it's just like, now you're weird. Right, yeah. Right, I like right. different music now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like getting up in the start morning. Start listening to IZ Brothers right. for no reason. You got a world view now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yo, he's bugging. You know what I'm saying? You know, so. Now I'm, I'm I'm eating healthy. I'm taking care of myself. I lost sixty pounds. Uh, right. You know, whereas all the gangsters in the front row now is women throwing panties at me. Yeah. I ain't going back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm like, yo, this is it. Uh, and it wasn't until <clears throat> so imagine everything, uh, everybody at work I put out into the recession mm-hmm. is when I told myself that you're still free, you're still alive, you're meant to be here, you're meant to be a star. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started kind of shedding the excess. Uh, but then when I got to what happened in um, the Bay, it's when I really said, I'm not even going to try to save face anymore. Right. You know, I love y'all, and I, I, I can take care of people from a distance. Uh, you don't have to be with me every day for you to feel the love uh, because we're not on the same path. You know uh, what I'm saying? And that's that was the realization. And I, I <clears> not <throat> no disrespect to anyone because I love everyone, but that's when my peace began. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can see it. Yeah, that's my And if people love you, they want you to grow. Right. Yeah, but then sometimes people are scared that if you grow, you're going to leave them behind.